So hello and welcome to the Film Mixologist, the place on the internet thingy where collaboration detective work happens. Case in point, this unit here. What I've got is a is a secondary fuel bowl for a holly carver, kind of four barrel, um, forty one sixty style. And the problem that I had with this bowl is something that I think is useful to make its own video about. And it is because a fault, which might be difficult to diagnose initially, and it comes in the shape of this part here of the fuel bowl. So let me bring you kind of closer to show you what what I'm talking about. So as you can see here, there is obviously a little bit of epoxy where I tried to fix where I tried to fix this. But essentially, this the this bit of the carburetor uh, is not necessarily it's not always covered like, like it is at the moment. And the the reason why why the epoxy is here is because of what the the problems that I had with this unit here. So I'll give you I'll give you the story. I was rebuilding a carburetor and I was doing the uh, secondary fuel bowl and. <clears throat> so I put a brand new needle and seat assembly <clears throat> and then I go to kind of test it with my vacuum pump like so. So I put my my, my, slide, my vacuum connector in here and then my vacuum pump, give it a couple of pumps and as you can see, oh wait a minute, uh, let's try this again, I put in my vacuum pump and as you can see there in the needle it kept losing pressure yeah so this told told me that the um the, the there was a problem and at first what i what i thought it was i, I thought it was a, a problem with the needle and seat assembly so then what i did is i changed the needle and seat assembly i run the same test again and i get the same result so evidently the needle and seat assembly was okay but the problem the problem was some other in some other area yeah so i went kind of a bit around the houses to be honest because at first i thought that maybe <clears throat> the the fuel bowl itself was broken but actually it wasn't and eventually after a little bit of kind of soul searching i realized that that what happened was that this area here this seal had been compromised and what 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 would have happened if I would have tried to put this on a car by just changing the needle and seat assemblies what that would have created would have created a situation where fuel would start coming out of here and it would, the car would slowly start leaking fuel through here which isn't which isn't a great news story if I'm being honest so so therefore what I tried to do and and this didn't even work. So what I did, I what I tried to do is I put some epoxy, and then put the vacuum pump again, and I tried it, and I gave it a couple of pumps to try and identify where <coughs> the leak was, and for the for the vacuum to try and suck in, if you want, some of this epoxy. So I thought that that was going to you know save the unit actually it didn't um, <clears throat> as you can see in the, in the test uh, I've just run um, and the, I guess the only way to fix this is if you have some sort of aluminium weld uh, you can make some sort of plug weld here that would probably be a winner but for the time being because I haven't got said bit of equipment uh, this unit unfortunately is gonna have to uh, go to the bin unfortunately dude this is this is uh, this is unfortunate because look at look at this this is this is this is a fuel bowl in quite good condition obviously I'm gonna recycle the baffle and, and everything else which I know now works but it's unfortunate that that this thing had to be had to be scrapped because of this leak that, that cannot be remedied and this actually brings me to, to to the point that i want to make in this video is the importance of of testing everything before 
it goes on the car. Um, so in my case, I was using a vacuum pump, um, <coughs> but you, you, you can use other methods, but I find that vacuum pumps work really well for this. And because what happens, the vacuum, the, what the vacuum pump does, it, it gives you an indication whether things are okay or not okay. And then you need to do some detective work to see, well, okay, what's the problem here specifically, or what are the systems that I need to address or change? So, and, and the other thing is, because obviously if you install this in the car and it starts leaking, sometimes you might think, ah, okay, so the problem here might be the needle and seat assembly. So you get the needle and seat assembly and you change it. That's, that's the first thing that I would do if, if I was kind of confronted with the same problem. Change the needle and seat assembly and you get the same thing. And actually that can be quite frustrating when you start doing kind of the parts cannon and start changing stuff and nothing happens. So that this is why it's a kind of vindication of my methods if you want of testing stuff. Um, I'd, and unfortunately this fuel bowl is not going to be a winner I'm afraid. But I want to say I hope you kind of got something out of this that this is helpful and therefore I want to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you've got any comments, just put it down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.